welcome to another GeoDev video. Today I want to talk about how you can render millions of features in your maps. This video is based off a blog post I wrote on the Esri blogs called Render Millions of Features in Your Maps. And this blog post is actually based off another blog post that our forever bearded friend John Nelson wrote uh, that examined looking at how places were named uh, in different regions. All right, so I thought it was an interesting blog post. Um, it had uh, some pretty good uh, information in it. Uh, what really got me, though, is the fact that he was looking at 2.3 million features inside this map, but he was doing it inside of Desktop GIS. I want to go ahead and turn this into a web map. So what you can do is uh, upload the data that he provided. It was a file geodatabase. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have a a feature service in your online account, and you're also going to have the actual file geodatabase. Um, you can go ahead and delete the file geodatabase if you wanted to once the feature service is created, uh, because this is really all that we're concerned about. Uh, so what I've done here is I created a feature layer view of the original feature service, so it's basically just a, a copy of the feature service, but now I can go ahead and I can start uh, doing some stuff with the visualization inside my map. Okay, so the next step is going to be to adjust the visualization for your feature layer uh, that you want to use. That way that when you publish your tiles, it'll go ahead and use the um, uh, defined visualizations that you've built for the feature layer. So let me get into a reasonable space. You can see it's trying to draw all these features and it gets a little slow. So uh, I just want to go ahead and make this a little easier by zooming in uh, somewhat closer. So let's come out over here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make the base map uh, something easier for me to use. Okay, so the first step is gonna be, you're gonna to wanna to go to the visualization tab for your feature layer. In that, once you're in there, you want to zoom the map in uh, really close to a location. That way it doesn't attempt to try and draw all 2.3 million features in the map. It'll just make the, uh, the map uh, really slow. It's a lot of features to try and draw in a feature layer uh, takes up, uh, uh, can just be a little cumbersome. Uh, then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and change the base map that I'm going to be working with to the base map that I'll probably use when I publish this web map. That way I can look at my visualizations correctly. Uh, then what I did in this map is I actually defined a uh, arcade expression for the visualizations here. And in my arcade expression, I'm looking at the name field for the features, and I'm using the arcade function called find. And I want to find uh, these various uh, names inside the name field. And if it finds something, it's going to return the index in the name field where it found it. So if uh, gap uh, was the first word, uh, I believe it returns zero. Uh, if it's uh, the sixth word, it'll return, um, I believe it's seven, because it's a zero index based. Uh, anything greater than zero just means that the name is in that name field. So if it finds gap, I'll return the word gap. If it finds pass, return pass. If it finds notch, return notch. If it finds saddle, I'll return saddle. All right, so it's a pretty straightforward uh, arcade expression. Uh, nothing too fancy going on there. Then what I want to do is adjust my visualizations a little bit. So if I come over here, click on the options for the visualization, I can click on the individual symbols now to change these symbols. I'm using Firefly symbols. So I'll just go ahead and start uh, playing with this a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so I kind of like the way this looks. I'm fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. I'll click Done. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on Save Layer. So now I have gone ahead and saved the visualization for the layer itself. All right, so the next step is to come into the Overview tab. Once you're in the Overview tab, click on Publish Tile Layer. And give this a few seconds. It's going to go ahead and fetch some information about the service. So it can go ahead and decide how it uh, the defaults for building the tiles. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, layer uh, US Place Names View Tiles. Uh, and I've got a couple tags in here. I've got the JSAPI tag, and I think I've got the first John Nelson tag uh, in the uh, online here. Save my own folder, and you see it's going to go ahead and give me suggestions for creating these tiles automatically. So it's going to build them down to the county level. That should be pretty good. Uh, I can use a feature layer to draw 
uh, most of these features below the county level. If I want to, I can go and play with this some more. I can get, say go down all the way to metropolitan area. Uh, that's always an option. But I'll leave a default for now and make sure that the checkbox for create tiles automatically is checked. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and give it a second to go ahead and publish the tile layer itself. And then we're going to do a little bit more work on the tile layer uh, so that it's easier for our, um, well, it's easier on our users when they start using an application that uses this layer. Right, so now that we have our tile layer, let's go into the settings. And the way this is set up is that it's going to go ahead and create tiles automatically, meaning that when users of a service um, start using an application that uses a service, uh, it's going to generate the tiles for the area that they're looking at. Uh, when those requests come in, the tiles will get created. Uh, that could take a little while though, because these, uh, remember, we're working with 2.3 million features. So the, the database still has to be queried for the features and then uh, provide the information for the rendering to create actual tiles on the back end. So uh, they take a little bit of a hit if they're the first ones looking at a particular area. But what I can do is I can go ahead and start building some tiles. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Build Tiles button. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and define an extent uh, for where I want these tiles to get built. All right. So I uh, see here it's already it's, it's saying the world, but I want to go ahead and let's come down here. Uh, I only want to care about building tiles in North America. And, I, and I've only got data in North America. I don't know why I was trying to uh, tell me uh, we've got tiles elsewhere, but we'll go ahead and uh, build some tiles out over here. Um, I could go ahead and get even further down. I could say maybe I only want to draw tiles on the uh, the West Coast area or uh, the East Coast or somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, I can go ahead and do that, depending if I know uh, where the users of my application are going to uh, be. But in this case, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, let's go with the, uh, the whole US uh, in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and pick these um, two bottom scales to be able to draw my tiles. And you can see here that these are going to have the most number of tiles in them. We've got about 87,000 here and almost 345,000 tiles at uh, these two scales here. I'll let the rest of these um, tiles get auto-generated as people start using the application. But these are the ones that would take the most time uh, to get built if I just left it at being automatically generated. Now you see I'm also going to go ahead and get a message here that uh, it's going to be uh, about 20, 20 and a half thousand uh, tiles to create with an estimated storage of 500 megabytes. Now, if you look at my blog post, I talk about this down here where um, it's going to tell me when I go to build it, how many credits I'm going to use. So if we come back over here, I say create tiles, you will get a message telling you the number of credits that's going to cost. Creating these tiles will cost you an estimated 2.048 credits, right? For to build 20,000 tiles, 2.048 credits. That's it, right? I mean, that's not a lot of credits at all. Uh, storage space is about half a gigabyte. And if you look at my blog post, I do mention the fact that tiles and data storage currently cost 1.2 credits per one gigabyte a month. Right, so uh, it's really not a lot of credits to do, create these tiles and uh, build these tile layers you can use in your organization and then in your other maps, right? Um, it does cost more credits probably to uh, store the feature layer itself, but if you don't need the feature service after you build tiles, just delete it and uh, you're good to go. All right, so I can go ahead and create my tiles there and uh, the rest is all done. All right, so my next step is going to be I want to use these uh, layers inside of a web map, All right? So let's go ahead and open a web map. Let's go to the United States. All right, let's zoom in a bit more. Uh, we're not going to see anything coming out of our tiles because we just are not uh, building them uh, at the moment, right? Um, these large tiles get auto-generated, so it could take a little bit for them to get built. But let's go and change our base map to the dark gray canvas that we used for the visualization. And let's zoom in. Um, let's say over here. Actually, let's go into Nevada area. 
over here somewhere. And at this point, I'm still drawing my tiles. And now I'm no longer drawing my tiles. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add the layer that I used for creating these tiles, which is my, my view. So I add my view. And let me look at my map here. So if I come over here, this is how I want to do it. So the scale range on my view, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, I'm going to copy that. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now if I zoom out, my uh, layers turn off. The feature layer is not going to be drawn. You can see it's faded out over here. The tiles will start to draw and once they're generated. And as I zoom in, the tiles turn off, but my feature layer is now drawing and completely accessible. At this point, I can go ahead and save this web map. So I'll save this as uh, FLTL, right? So it's a feature layer and tile layer all together. Uh, again, I'll give it my good old John Nelson tag. Oops. There we go. And save my map. And now I can start using this map in other applications. And then finally, when it's all said and done, here's the original um, map and application I had with the original tiles already built. You can see these tiles are already cooked and they show up pretty fast. I can go ahead and uh, pan around the map and my tiles are ready to go. And as I zoom in, the tile layers are gonna turn off and I'll start using a feature layer uh, to display my data. So as you can see, trying to display millions of features in your web maps uh, isn't difficult, but does take a bit of planning. Um, you've got to plan out how um, you want to cook your tiles, so what levels you want uh, to cook your tiles at, and then um, how you're going to create your web map and decide when to turn things on and off. Uh, but once you do all that, you end up with a really great product you can use to display really awesome looking web maps inside of your mapping applications. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.